let's talk about brown fat. And um, if you if you're willing, I'd love to drill into brown fat at a, at a deep level. Um, again, uh, my understanding of this is is far more elementary than yours. Obviously, you're the expert. My understanding about brown fat is that it's located in specific areas of our body. Uh, maybe more widespread than when I learned in school. I thought it was, uh, I was taught it was just at the clavicles and the back of the neck and upper back, but who knows? I learned that there's more of it when we're children, maybe more distributed throughout our body and that it's rich in mitochondria. But what is so special about the brown fat? Like if we could just go into the biology of brown fat a little bit, what does it look like? Uh, You've measured it in human subjects. Where is it distributed really? Can it expand its distribution? Can we activate and expand the amount of brown fat as adults. And um, for those of you that are cringing already thinking we're talking about getting fatter, it's quite the opposite. We're talking about not subcutaneous fat, but fat located around the the organs. But please educate me. um, Tell me where I'm wrong and um, expand my knowledge on brown fat. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, you are not wrong, but um, it's definitely true that there are more locations uh, of the brown fat than we previously thought. Um, There's this very nice uh, study from 2017 by Leitner et al., where they uh, had made these uh, PET-CT overlays of um, their subjects, where you can see where in the body do we have brown fat and where can we grow more brown fat, um, so to say. Um, So the brown fat is can, is very plastic, so it means that it can it can grow and it can decrease, and this is proven in in studies where we have seen um, um, people with the fail cryocytoma. It's like a very specific cancer type, where people where, where from the seventies where we can see that if they have this specific kind of uh, cancer type, um, they have a t- they have this tumor on the uh, adrenal gland, so they have like an, a huge increase in noradrenaline. And because of that, they have this continuous activation of the brown fat. And they ha- have grown a lot of brown fat in the whole body, uh, or abdomen, or where it's located in these six different places. But it is less, like be- very much compared to like normal people. Um, and what they then see, uh, what we learn from this study is that brown fat can I- apparently grow if you have um, an increase in noradrenaline in the body. It's not like you want that because when that happens, you have a high blood pressure. You don't want it chronically, right? You, you just want it on like a short amount of time and then it can grow for a bit, but you don't want it chronically, of course not. But because it, it activates also your sympathetic nervous system. So they have also showed they had high blood pressure. They had, uh, they lost a lot of weight, of course, because this is activating your metabolism. So they, they found luckily that when they uh, removed this be- uh, benign uh, tumor, uh, that uh, the brown fat um, decreases again to normal size and they gain weight again and they had uh, normal blood pressure. So the story ends well. <laughs> but it's kind of like proof of concept of the brown fat can actually grow. So it's plastic in its in its way of like it can, it can grow and it can decrease again. So that's very good. Good studies to to see what, it, what the body is capable of. But we don't, of course, want all that brown fat. We just want it to be, um, we just want to keep it actually and, and keep it activated. Because what we see in studies is also that after the age of 40, um, people, um, uh, studies have shown that there is an association with having less brown fat, but increased obesity. So, of course, we, we don't know yet whether uh, brown fat decreases with age and therefore we get obese or we get obese and therefore we have less brown fat, but as brown fat is an insulin-sensitive organ in our body and we get obese, uh, just like the muscles get less sensitive, um, insulin-sensitive, the brown fat does as well, and therefore it maybe decreases. It could be a theory uh, Mm -hmm. that I think could be one of the reasons why we we don't see that much brown fat in in elderly uh, people. Some have a lot especially people working outside. There, there are studies showing this. Who uh, People who, um, who work outside. do physical work outside, outside. farmers yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. They it's, expose themselves to it. So mm-hmm. it, they'll, they'll just keep it in that way. Mm-hmm. It's um, And I suppose we should um, clarify for people in case they don't know that insulin sensitivity is a very good thing. You want yeah. that. You want your cells yeah. to be sensitive to insulin. Um, insulin insensitivity is type two diabetes um, and is associated with obesity. 
Um, so just a point of clarification there. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to me. I, I, I usually work out at home, but I, I go to a gym once or twice a week if I can, because it's good if I see uh, the outside world. Um, <laughs> and there are a few individuals at the, the gym who are, they're not particularly large or muscular, um, but they are incredibly um, lean and their posture is great, presumably from the musculoskeletal work. Um, and they, they're in their seventies and eighties. I mean, it's remarkable, right? Yeah, and, and, yeah. um, and I know all the telltale signs of hormone augmentation. I'm very good at spotting that. There are a few <laughs> telltale signs. I've talked about this on other podcasts and they're not, they're, that's not why they're, 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 um, they're fit. They're, they're, they're clearly of that look. And you see this outside the gym too, of course, for people that look like they've done a lot of physical labor their whole life. Yeah. They're just moving a lot. They, they have strong hands and features and they're, they're um, and they're not necessarily excessively lean, but you can tell that they've been using their musculoskeletal yeah. system. And I like to talk to these people and ask them like, not what are you doing now for your workout, but what, what did you grow up doing? You know, and I would say, and obviously I haven't run statistics on this, but more than 75% of them respond that they grew up on a farm or that they did some sort of manual labor or were a postman or a postwoman or doing something where they moved a lot for their early years and throughout middle age. And most of them are now in retirement, but some of them are still working and they all still moving a lot. So the relationship between shiver and brown fat makes sense to me. But is it the case that as we're just moving around, um, I've heard of NEAT, non-exercise um, induced thermogenesis. So if we're just moving around, um, that we are activating brown fat or do, does there need to be this stressor? Does there need to be shiver and a cold stimulus or a heat stimulus to activate the brown fat? In other words, um, is just staying active enough or do we need to do some sort of temperature uh, shock type thing like deliberate cold exp exposure? Yeah, I think that is a really good question because how, how, also, why do we have this tissue? Then, if it's if it has to be extreme, then you can question what what do we need this tissue for? But it seems that you can activate the brown fat with just a little bit of exposure to to cold. So cold is the, the most potent stressor activator of uh, our brown fat because it's our temperature regulating uh, organ in our body. So first responder to that. So the muscles will be a little bit too late, uh, and therefore we have maybe these two kind of tissues. So. Actually, just uh, exposing yourself or a hand, actually, just to cold water. So studies have shown um, that if you just put your hand in cold water, not that you're going to gonna do that all day or or every day or anything. It's not uh, it's it's not something you have to do. But it just shows that you can activate your brown fat just by getting a temperature change on your skin. So you can go outside in t-shirts. That's why also we were just talking about well, people who works outside or move a lot or get out, in and out of it, like changing the temperature of their body all the time, they will have more brown fat. And uh, activating that is going to keep your metabolism higher and your insulin sensitivity uh, study have also shown this. So the brown fat can be activated as soon as you just change your temperature in the skin. So going outside in a t-shirt, wearing cooling vests, also studies have shown this for 10 days, it's going to also uh, grow your, uh, your brown fat. So you can get more brown fat if you expose yourself to the cold. You don't have to start in a cold uh, shower. You don't have to start in a cold uh, plunge if you're not really ready for that yet. But just exposing yourself to the cold wind has also shown to activate your brown fat. Or if you don't want to be like uh, in this uh, awake state, uh, uh, then you can also just sleep in the cold and you won't notice it that much maybe. But studies have shown that if you sleep in 19 degrees Celsius, um, then you will activate your uh, brown fat and you will grow your brown fat. So you have more of it. So this uh, very nice studies um, from Hansen et al. from 2017 showed that a, a group of subjects who slept in a room at 24 degrees, and then they made this PET CT scanning to see how much brown fat do they have from the beginning. So what we call baseline. Then they measured again after um, a month of sleeping in 19 degrees. And they saw, I think it's remarkable, just one month at 19 degrees sleeping there. They had a duvet on and they were still had 
close on when we're sleeping. So they're under a cover, under a yeah, duvet? Yeah, under, under uh -huh. a duvet, yeah. 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 Okay. The subjects were sleeping at 19 degrees for one month, had increased his insulin sensitivity. The next month, they slept at 24 degrees. They measured this again, and then they had decreased, actually, a little bit. And then they slept at 27 degrees, so quite warm room, actually, for for the uh, fourth month, um, and they saw uh, even less uh, activation of the brown fat and also insulin sensitivity. So it seems that you can expose yourself and pretty rapidly the brown fat will respond to this because it's so sensitive to noradrenaline, right? So if you keep exposing yourself to a little bit of cold, you will also get a little bit adapted to it, but that's because the brown fat um, has grown these more mitochondria in the cells. So these small energy fabrics, that's going to activate the cells and that's going to take up glucose and fat from the fatty acids from the bloodstream to keep uh, the thermogenesis up. And that's going to clear up some sugar and it's going to clear uh, so in the, in the bloodstream and some, some fat as well. So the brown fat can in that way decrease uh, our unhealthy fat, which is the white fat, um, and the white fat is what we don't want too much of, but we still need some, of course. Um, and it's our energy storage, so it's very important that it's there. We just don't need a, a lot of it. So on our thighs and also around our inner organs, that's where it's, it's located. So if we can have activation of the brown fat just by going out in the cold and just by sleeping in a cold room, or if you are, have courage for it, you can go out and expose yourself in a cold plunge um, cold showers is also going to do the trick. So you can do different variations of this. Just exposing yourself to various temperatures is going to activate the brown fat because it was involved to keep us in a perfect homeostatic balance regarding temperature. So to keep us alive. Incredible. 